So this is Dan York, and I'm here with uh, Moshe Yavkowski, who is uh, the president of Disaggregate. So, Moshe, um, greetings. How are you? I'm quite well, thank you, Dan. So we're here in Orlando, and uh, you've recently come up with a voice mashup that you're going to be showing off out at Ecom, or others are going to be showing off, related to phones and location. Can you talk a little bit about what that is? Well, a couple weeks ago, I came to the realization that telephone numbers act as ubiquitous geotags. And here's what I mean. When I'm walking down the street, if I'm driving, let's say, from uh, Orlando Airport to City Hall over here, well, I'm on the way from the airport, I don't know where I am. I don't know what city I'm in. If I take a wrong turn on the way to City Hall, I'm not going to, uh, and I call somebody and say, give me directions. I don't know where I am to enter those directions. But on the other hand, when I'm driving along, I might see um, signs, and the signs will have phone numbers. And those phone numbers act as geotags if you have reverse lookup. So what I did is I built a phone mashup. What I'm doing is taking the if by phone, um, let's say what we'll call them, we'll call the telephony web service. And when somebody calls into the phone number, if by phone will pick up the starting telephone number. It'll say, where are you calling from? Give this the starting phone number. And you'll say the phone number of where you're at. Now, phone numbers are very easy to enter to telephones. They're designed to receive telephone numbers. So you enter in the phone number using the keypad, using your voice. And then I go out and I uh, hit strike iron and do a reverse directory lookup on that telephone number and I get a location, and then I hit MapQuest and do a reverse lookup and get a route. And then I can route you to City Hall. So what I've done is I've taken the phone numbers and turned them into locations. But how does it know my starting number? Well, what it is is you're driving along and you take a look out the window of your car and you see a, a phone number on a business. Okay. All right? So there's no download to your telephone. It's not as if though I have to do a Java download. You don't need a smartphone. I don't have to have GPS on your phone. All I need is you have to tell me the phone number of some place where you are. Okay. And then, All right? and then you do a, a phone number of the place you want to go. And then you do the phone number of the place you want to go. Now, for e-com itself, I have a um, mashup out there and it's running right now as a demo. The number I... You know what? Go to phone2directions.com. That's P H O N E 2, number 2, directions.com. And you can get the phone number from there. And you call in, and it has a fixed endpoint of ecom. So all you have to do to get the ecom from Vermont is say, well, here's my <laughs> phone number in Vermont. And you call into ecom. You don't even have to even tell it where the ecom location is. It'll tell you how to get to the uh, to ecom in Vermont, in uh, California. Yeah, and we did that, right? Because uh, I tried that out, and, and I live in Vermont. And yes, it was giving me precise instructions <laughs> <laughs> okay. from my home all the way along. Right, exactly. Yeah, no, so... Um, so now, have you made that more generic so I can put in an endpoint as well? Right. So if you call into the ECOM demo number, I've got three different uh, options there. One option is dry directions to ECOM from whatever phone number. And let's say you're at ECOM and you want to get to a restaurant. So you call up the restaurant, it sounds like a nice place, now you want to get there. So you can call up the system and say, I want directions from ECOM to a telephone number and give it that telephone number. And a third option is general directions, and you say, here's my start phone number, here's my destination phone number, and here's how you get there. And by the way, the source code for that uh, piece of the demo, the general directions, is available at SourceForge. And once again, if you go to phone2directions.com, you can find the pointer to SourceForge and go to SourceForge and download it and also get the explanation of how the code works. It's in PHP. Um, it, so you've got the interface to the web interface. It, actually, it's a pretty nice piece of code because it shows you how to do a web interface to MapQuest, how to do a web interface to uh, StrikeIron to get your reverse directory, and also how to do a web interface to if by phones. Now, is uh, StrikeIron or now is that a for fee service or those are for fee? Now, StrikeIron is a, it costs me real money every time somebody calls in. <laughs> MapQuest, on the other hand, gives you a developer key. So at least for this developer demo, I don't have to pay them. Uh huh. All right. Right. If you were to uh, use it in commercial right. production, you'd right. have to exactly. get it. Right. Exactly. So the commercial, the or first of all, there's a lot of different things you can do with this. You can probably imagine. But the very first thing that I want to do to commercialize this is offer a service, and I've already got it set up more or less as a turnkey operation, where you call me up and say, "Hey, Moshe, I've got a restaurant. I would like to have this phone number that I can, my patrons can call, and they could find directions in." Right. Now this obviously works as long as you're dealing with phone numbers that have 
geographic locations. You know, right. if you're not dealing with local number portability or mobile phones or items like that. Exactly. Right? Uh, there are two. There are two answers to those questions. First answer is yeah. You're right. So there are certain phone numbers that are not going to work. If it goes to some cell phone number, maybe it'll be. If somebody's put the cell phone number outside their business address and their cell phone, I, I won't get it. You know, I won't get that phone number. And I actually tried it on a bunch of entrepreneurial businesses in Chicago. And you know, it's all people with cell phones opening up offices downtown in hosted environments. And so none of them, none of those phone numbers worked. However, I'm using the cheap service from Strike Iron, and I know that people are moving to portability. But I'll bet you a nickel that. As time goes on, people will continue to find ways to get around that problem of relying solely on phone company resources. And people, because it's so valuable to have reverse lookup, that there will be commercial services that do reverse lookup regardless of whether you have a mobile number or a ported number or an IP number. Yeah, a VoIP number would do the same challenge too, exactly, right? A bondage I, or anything else. Yeah, it is. So in the meantime, really the telephone numbers tend to be fairly ubiquitous. Yep. And the ordinary ones on the side of businesses tend to work. Yep. Uh, I, so in the meantime, I've got a lucrative uh, possibilities here. And I believe going forward that I'm covered, but we'll see going forward. Well, it's a great example, I think, anyway, about how you can do a mashup with these other different services like this. Absolutely. I'm just having a lot of fun because uh, I like, especially I like the If By Phone API, because that means it comes in looking like a, essentially the web phone output is, um, a get post with some data in it. My response back is some XML saying what the directions are. Hmm. So, I mean, it's, it's a simple get post to do telephony. It's a simple get post to do the reverse lookup. It's, you know, what more can you ask for in life? Well, now I'm, I'm doing this for a Voxeo blog, etc. So where does Voxeo fit in the picture of all this? Uh, Voxeo uh, provides the back-end technology over at If By Phone which is my connection with If By Phone because they needed some help with the Voxeo technology and I do Voxeo, a lot of Voxeo work. So uh, I'm their, I came in to be as their outside speech technology guy who understands speech technology in Voxeo and help them out. Okay, so it goes in through If I Phone's web interface, then it connects into Voxeo's application engine, etc. Right, exactly. What well, goes in through Web by Phone, and they have Voxeo running on their own servers. Oh, okay, the prophecy on their right, premise. Right, prophecy okay. on their premise. And then that goes out as a get post to my script, which is some, running somewhere in the universe. Yep. So it's just as if though somebody hit a web page someplace and sent a web form information out to me. So from a developer's perspective, I don't have to know anything about telephony. I have to know anything about speech. I just have them to have a free developer account over at If By Phone. Oh yeah, that's the other piece. So If By Phone is giving out one million minutes a month to developers. So you just go there and you say, "I want to be a developer," and they'll give you. You won't get the whole million minutes for yourself, but you get a good as many chunk of, as much as you need of it actually of that chunk. Right. Right. So cool. That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And that so, and, so what's next uh, with this? These kind of mashups that you've been doing like this. What are you thinking of next? Well, you know, that's a really interesting question. There's all sorts of tricky things. Um, I'll give you an example of something which a client, I am actually have, I'm fishing for a client right now, we're, we're sort of preliminary talks, but somebody said, hey, you know, I have this sort of adventure game that I have to run, and instead of having a download to cell phones, right, you have a cell phone and a complicated download and a camera and, and do all sorts of complicated things like that, um, maybe I can just have it done by phone numbers. You know, you start, I have a starting phone number here at City Hall, and here's the phone number of City Hall, and I enter it onto my, I call up the system, I give it the phone number, it says, okay, here's your de routing to your next destination, right? Or here's the clue to your next destination. When you get there, you find a phone number there, and says, oh, okay, you got close enough. Here's the uh, routing to your next destination. So you can do the, use the phone numbers as geotags. Uh, I'll give you another example. I just did a module which I hope to test and have running, but probably won't have running uh, in time for ecom. Which is, where am I? We're going to have the Olympics, we hope, in Chicago in 2016. Really? Why we have visitors from out of town. They're from Japan. You know. Yep. You know, and they're going to, you know, they can walk over the street and somebody go, "Asako da toko deska," and they're, you know, they're going to get a look like, <laughs> "What?" But or they can call in to a special phone number that Japanese visitors have and look at the side of a building and enter the phone number and get directions in Japanese. Was that actually real Japanese? Yes, it was. Okay, so I won't get anybody saying complaints about what you just said. You'll get complaints about my pronunciation. Oh, okay, all right, all right. Well, that's a cool idea. So they could be able to just go and then figure out where they are through the geolocation again if they take that number off that business or whatever else. Right. Exactly. Cool. So um, it, I think it's actually very. It, so that's just you know the tip of the iceberg. Anything that requires location can use telephone numbers as a proxy and that's the basic point and telephone numbers are everywhere 
Right. All right. Now let your imaginations roll and download some soft. Uh, download it from uh, from SourceForge. We'll probably put a copy up at rocketsource.org, where I've got some other things that uh, other interesting CCXML applications. Yep. yep. And I think we're going to have a lot of fun with this. Cool. So people can learn more at what URL? Phone to number two directions.com. That would okay. be a good starting point. And, and uh, you've also got a blog out there, I know, too. Yes, so. sir. I've got a book called The Pebble and the Avalanche. And so it's pebbleandavalanche.com. And if you go to pebbleandavalanche.com, you click on the blog link, and then you'll find a more coherent explanation of this entire, so <laughs> All right. entire concept. All right. Well, thanks a lot. I've been speaking here with uh, Moshe Yavkowski, who is the president of Disaggregate. So thanks for your time, Moshe. You're quite welcome, sir. All right. This is Dan York signing out. Bye. Bye.